So this example says develop a free body diagram and determine the support reactions at points A, B, and C of the 100 kilogram car illustrated in the figure below. Assume that the connections at A, B, and C are all frictionless points of contact. So right there below in the solution, you see I laid out a framework required to solve this problem. Remember that this is our three-step process. We have to draw a free body diagram of the object of interest. We have to write out and solve the equations of equilibrium, which I will present to you in this uh, solution, and determine any unknown support reactions and forces. And then step three is to calculate any necessary internal forces. Now, we aren't going to really get into step three in today's workshop, this cram session. That is the outside of the scope. However, it's very important to keep these three steps together because in the future cram sessions, when we hit trusses and um, you know work on shear and bending, uh, you'll see step number three play itself in to the solution. So we've gone ahead and muted that out as you can see, but we will keep it there. So the, that leaves us with two steps. We got to draw a free body diagram and we have to write out and solve the equations of equilibrium. So our first step is to sketch out our free body diagram. Now I just highlighted with a red dotted line our cart. This is our object of interest. It's the cart itself. This is what we will be analyzing in this particular problem. Now when defining our free body diagram, there is a four step process that I like to follow to ensure that I'm capturing all the relevant data I will need to further and analyze this problem. Now the four step process is sketch the complete object that you're working with, draw all external support reactions as well as any springs, cables, or other forces acting on the system, and we will include complex supports in step two. We will identify each force with the proper magnitude and direction. We'll label all unknowns with unique nomenclature. And then finally, we'll add any relevant dimensions needed for analysis. So let's go ahead and start with step number one, sketching the complete object. Now again, our object of interest is the cart itself, so we can simply draw out that shape as it's depicted in the original formula. This is the starting point of our free body diagram and the object in which we want to confirm equilibrium for and to solve for any unknown support reactions. And they've already identified where those unknown support reactions are going to be A, B, and C. Now the next step is to identify all the external support reactions, the springs, the cables that are attached to our object. Now we will also again include any complex support, self-weight, things like that. So I should actually add, I should probably expand on what complex supports are. Those are things like wedges or ramps, which we have in this case, along with any information we have about that um, inclined surface or the ramp in this case um, and that's a complex support now looking at our problem statement as well as the figure given we know that the support reactions at point a b and c are going to be of significance so let's go ahead and identify those first and we know that the cart weighs in at 100 kilograms and that drops vertically from the center of gravity as it's shown so these are all the forces that are acting on our object of interest. There really isn't much we can do with this diagram as it sits right now. We don't have the data to actually start analyzing it. So we will have to move over or move forward to our next step, which is to identify each force with all the appropriate data needed to assess equilibrium. Now what I like to do is identify each of these forces with a unique nomenclature. So first let's go ahead and look at the forces that act at A, B, and C. And as you see, I've identified them as F sub A, F sub B, F sub C. 
Now, it doesn't really matter how you identify these forces. They could be A, B, C, they can be D, E, F, they can be X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter as long as you keep them straight. But this is the most straight way that I know to do it that, that I don't confuse myself. Um, so feel free to go with uh, what you're comfortable with. And we also have our self weight, which is W. Now that we have all of our forces identify, we can now begin adding in all the pertinent dimensional data that will help us actually solve for these unknowns. So we just simply bring all over all the dimensional data. There really isn't a need to filter anything out. We never want to go back and pull dimensional data once we are actually into our analysis. So just pull it all over at this point, place it on your free body diagram as you see right there. Um, you know, if you have too much, it doesn't matter. You just don't want to have too little. So you have to actually go back. And so there you are, you know, right there is our fully developed free body diagram that's based on the information and the illustration we are given in our problem statement. So now what we can actually do is go on to step two of our process where we will write out our equations of equilibrium and determine any unknown support reactions and forces, which we know there are three, A, B, and C, or F sub A, F sub B, F sub C. Now, recall back to college days that um, for a two-dimensional problem, there's three equations of equilibrium, um, which are the sum of the X components over there on the right side. EOE is just short for equations of equilibrium. So we have the sum of all the components in the X direction must sum up to zero. The sum of all the Y components sum up to zero, as well as the sum of the moments must equal zero. Now the first two equations that you see right there, those will confirm that we have translational equilibrium. If those equations do not sum up to zero, then we're translating. That object is translating up, down, right, left on the XY coordinate system. Um, it's going somewhere. So we have to ensure that we have translational equilibrium and those first two equations will do just that. Now this third equation right here is going to confirm that we have rotational equilibrium. So once all those sum up to zero, if all of them sum up to zero, that cart is just chilling. It's not moving at all. And that's what we want in a static problem. It's going to actually allow us to um, um, define what the support reactions are, which were asked in this question. And let's first establish our axes. Now for most problems, we can simply work along the standard XY coordinate system as you see right there. It's uh, right there to the bottom left of that free body diagram. But doing so here will just complicate this problem beyond our means and especially when we are up against the clock. It's possible but undesirable and most definitely undesirable on the FA exam. So what I want you to do and I advise you to do is actually to rotate this axis so that it runs along that inclined plane as shown. Now what this does is it actually significantly simplifies our calculations by making self-weight the only force that needs any adjustment to accommodate that axis rotation. All of the other forces are run either parallel or perpendicular to our plane, falling right on the XY coordinate system as we have rotated it. So before we actually begin our calculations, let's determine the X, Y components of self weight. Now the X component will run around along the rotated X axis and will be equal to W cosine 30. The Y component will run along the rotated Y axis and be W cosine 60 as shown on there on that free body diagram. So for simplification's sake, we can go ahead and just remove self-weight, um, the, the, the force that represented the original self-weight, and just kind of clean up that diagram a little bit. And, and we can go ahead now and move forward with writing our equations of equilibrium. So let's go ahead and start with our translational equations, which run along the XY axis. 
Now gathering all of the force components that run along the x-axis, we get the equation Fa, F sub A minus W cosine 60. Now doing the same for the components that run along the y-axis, we get FB plus FC minus W cosine 30. So next, let's go ahead and formulate our rotational equation. Remember this is the moment must add up and sum to zero. I will take the moment about point B because we always want to actually eliminate an unknown if we can. And I'll also make the counterclockwise direction a positive moment direction. Now it doesn't matter which way you choose as positive. When you calculate your final answers and, and, and you get some type of value, if it's a negative sign, and say we assumed counterclockwise, that means the actual moment is acting clockwise. So a negative value just means that we represented initially incorrectly and we just need to flip it. Not a big deal, just know that's what it means. Now, doing the same as we did with the translational equations, we identify and gather all the forces that create a moment about point B. In doing so, we get a big long equation. I'm not going to really read that out to you, but um, pretty much uh, F sub A, the self weight, and F sub C is creating some moment about point B. So now we have all of our equations defined. And as you see, we have three equations, we have three unknowns. So we have everything we need to actually solve for the unknown reactions. We just have to take a glance to look around and see where the most obvious place and least painful place is to start. And once we have one reaction, we can plug or the value for the reaction, we can actually start just plugging into other equations and, and minimizing the number of unknowns, non, unknowns we have until we have them all defined. So looking at all these equations, you already see where I want to start. I want to start with the sum of the x components. And the reason I want to do this is because there's only one unknown. We know self-weight. So all we have to do is plug in that information. And once we do that, we get uh, the reaction at point A or F sub A is equal to 491 Newtons. So I'll stop you right here real quick. As you can see right there, we were given the, we were given the mass of this cart as 100 kilograms. So we had to multiply that by the gravity, which is 9.81. Had we not done that, we would have got a significantly different number, much, much lower. And um, so that's, that's the big deal right there. That's why mass and weight and knowing the difference is so important come exam day, because believe me, they're going to give you things in mass. You're gonna plug those in without thinking. You're gonna get an answer that is an op answer option and you're going to get it wrong. So just, uh, you know, embed that into your mind right now. Make the mistake today so you don't have to make the mistake come exam day. So next, let's go ahead and take a look around. Once again, we have two more equations. What one do we want to work with? We do want to use the moment equation. And um, once we do that, we just have to plug in our information and it becomes one big ugly uh, equation. But once all calculated out we get a force at point C of 670 newtons and so we have FA we have FC the only the last unknown is obviously FB and all we have to do is actually take uh, FC plug that in and we get a reaction at FB of 180 newtons so there we have it all of our unknown reactions are defined, which I'll recap. F sub A is 491, F sub B is 180, and F sub C is 670. So those are all the Newtons as well.